On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of the Lord. You are the bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, let's bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, power in the name of the Lord. You know there's power in the name of Jesus. No. Incorporated, where our leaders are Pastor Joe and Lady Annette Newsom. We thank God for you joining us here, Facebook Live and YouTube. We just want to say thank you for being a part of our service on tonight. Tonight it is Friday, 25, no, 25 September. 2020. So we thank God for being back in the house of the Lord just one more time. You see, I'm already trying to rush to you. Y'all pray for me. I said November, and this is yet still the month of September. So I truly thank God for being back in the house of the Lord just one more time. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And on tonight, we are going to be talking about kingdom harvesting. Kingdom harvesting harvesting and I am the teacher on tonight and I am sister Stacy amen so what I am going to do I'm going to just going to give you a brief recap on what we have been learning and we have been learning about the kingdom so for the last two weeks we have been learning about kingdom sowing and our uh, teachers were pastor Newsom and minister Edwards so minister Edwards we know he talked to us about what the kingdom is and what the kingdom is not. And then they went on in to talk about what are we sowing, kingdom sowing. So kingdom sowing 
So they were coming from Matthew, the 13th chapter, the first through the 13th verse, and verses 18 through 30. So what are we sowing? What should we be sowing as kingdom sowers? We should be sowing the word of God. Sowing seeds, which is the word of God. And it says in verse 19, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in their heart. That is, with, that is he which, seed, which received seed by the wayside. We also learned about the different seeds, the different places where the seeds were thrown. So we found out that some were, some, some were thrown amongst the seeds, amongst the stone, the stony places. Please forgive me, so let me just calm down just a little bit. God, I'm asking that you have your way. So we also learned that some seeds fell into the stony places. That's, that's what I meant to say. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and a nun with joy receiveth it. So when the seeds fall amongst the stony places, that's like the person who has no root in himself. For a while they receive the word, but when trials and persecutions arises, then he or she is offended. Well, Sister Stacy, where can you find that at? That is found in Matthew 13 and 21. We also learned that the stony places are the shallow, are the shallow individuals, those that are not truly converted. So you are hearing the word, but you are holding on to some things in your past, and this can choke the word of God right out of you. So we have to be able to let the past go. Ask God to heal us from the things that transpired in our past. And this right here can cause us to be unfruitful. And then we also learned about the seeds that fell on the good ground. So Minister Edwards, he shared with us in Romans 12 and 21, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We also learned from Pastor Newsom that in order to plant, the farmer has to break up the fallow ground. Amen. So that fallow ground is the ground that has not been tilled and has not been plowed or sown. So the gospel is the plow and the one who ministers the word of God, they are the plowmen. And then on last Friday, Minister Edwards, he was talking to us about the three G's. And he was talking about the ground, the gospel, and the glory. So I'm just giving you a brief recap to just get us caught up on what all we have been learning about kingdom sowing. We learned every believer is in charge, is charged with sowing seeds. We must surrender our wills to the, supreme real, to the supreme rule of God. The ground must be prepared and the temperature has to be right. The temperature has to be right. We are mandated to sow good seeds. Is your seed lying dormant? Is your heart stony? until you cannot allow the seed to take root. And I know when service was over, Minister Edwards, I guess he had a uh -huh moment to where he made the illustration that the seed has to go down into the ground in order for it to spring up. Amen. And it says disobedience can cause the seed to lie dormant. Are you sowing good seed? Now, this week's lesson we will be talking about kingdom harvesting. And our, re our scripture reference is coming from Matthew's, the ninth chapter, the 36 and the 37 verse. Matthew's 9, 36 through 37. Matthew's, the ninth chapter, the 36 through the 37 verse. 
But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Our next background scripture will be coming from Luke the 10th chapter, Luke 10 verses 1 and 2. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore he said, therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Most heavenly and gracious Father, God, we just want to say thank you. God, we thank you for this another night, oh God, of pastoral teaching, oh God. God, we're asking that you have your way even now in the name of Jesus. God, use these lips of clay, oh God, like never before, oh God, even now in the name of Jesus. Give me clarity of speech, oh God. God, I'm asking that you have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way. God, for those that wanted to be here, oh God, but sick in the body, God, we're asking that you heal even now in the name of Jesus. Let your healing virtue, oh God, permeate their bodies even now in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking that you touch even now in the name of Jesus. The minds, oh God, that the hearts, oh God, that are not sown, that are not usable, for your service, oh God. God, we're asking that you touch even now in the name of Jesus and that you will break up the fallow ground even now in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking that you have your way in this lesson on tonight, kingdom harvesting, oh God, that we will make ourselves readily available unto you. God, that we will submit our wills to your will, oh God, like never before, even now in the name of Jesus. God, we need our hearts, oh God, to be plowed. God, so that when we open up our mouths, oh God, to declare what thus says the Lord, oh God, that you will use us and that souls will be saved, oh God. In thy son Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So we did come from Matthew's, the ninth chapter, the 36th and the 37th verse. And we also came from Luke, the 10th chapter, the first and the second verse. And we were on tonight, we are talking about kingdom harvesting. So what is the harvest? It says, Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful. So what does plenteous mean, Sister Stacy? Plenteous means ample. It means abundance. It means yielding or producing in abundance. What is the harvest? Jesus is not the farmer. Therefore, he cannot be talking about a physical harvesting of fruit or grain. What Jesus is talking about is the spiritual harvesting of people. So it's all about winning souls for the kingdom. This is an illustration of the good news of Jesus Christ. The harvest is the unsaved. This is the backslider. So we are to go out and win souls for the kingdom. The Jews were the chosen people. And they were also the ones that rejected Jesus, the chief cornerstone, as we know in scripture, that the builders rejected. It is when we go out to harvesting, when we go out harvesting, when we go out winning souls, we are telling them about the forgiveness of sin to the world and the reconciling of men with God. This harvest means the great commission Jesus gave in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. 
So what does Jesus say about this spiritual harvest? He says that it's plentiful and that there is much work to do in the harvest. Now, who are the laborers? What about the laborers to work in this harvest? Jesus says the laborers are few. But why are they few, Sister Stacy? Because... There are a lot of people who do not want to follow Jesus. The Bible tells us that all people by nature, children of wrath, Ephesians 2 and 3, it says everyone is born dead in their trespasses and sins, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of air, which is found in Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. It says we're yet talking about why the laborers are few. The laborers are few because people love all that is in the world. The desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, which is 1 John 2 and 16, more than they love God. So why are the laborers few? Because there are times where people just don't want to get out and declare what thus says the Lord. They said the laborers are few because among those who follow Jesus, there are some that are not laborers in the harvest. So Paul was saying to his fellow Christians, we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus for his good work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has prepared the work for every Christian in the harvest there is labor to be done and we must all do our part so what does that mean sister stacy that there are souls that um you are going to win i may plant the seed but you may go out and water the seed so it is our responsibility with such a great task of harvesting and so few laborers what shall we do? Jesus said for us to pray honestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers in his harvest. God knows that the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. And he has been, he currently is, and will continue to raise up men and women to labor in his harvest. He is doing it even right now. This is why we should have a Holy Ghost boldness down on the inside to share the good news of Jesus. The Bible says in John, the 10th chapter, the 27th through the 28th verse, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. The gospel is to go out into the entire world because his word says, the word shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the things for which I sent, which was found in Isaiah 55 and 11. It says the gospel is to go out into the entire world. So John wrote in Revelations, the seventh chapter, the ninth through the tenth verse, we see this promise is going to be fulfilled. After this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hand and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. This does not refer that everyone is going to be saved, but it does mean that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. And that's found in Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 13 verse. 
So what is something remarkable about this responsibility is that it is to pray earnestly that it is understood you are asking for the Lord to send out other laborers. So we notice that in the Bible reading on tonight that uh, the 72 who were told to pray were the first to go out. Jesus sent them out two by two. Jesus spoke of a spiritual harvesting waiting to be reaped. As Jesus traveled, he saw the crowds and he had compassion on them. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest, which we read in Matthews, the ninth chapter in the 36th through the 38th verse. Jesus referred that many souls needing to be brought to repentance and faith as a harvest waiting to be realized. There are souls out there in the world that needs to hear about the word of God, what thus says the Lord. Jesus also used the same metaphor when he was talking to the woman in Samaria. She told her all, he told her all about herself and what did she do? She ran into the city and began to tell them everything that she had found out about Jesus. And there was such a great multitude that followed her, that followed after Jesus. And it says that after talking to the woman at the well, Jesus told his disciples, don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. And that is found in John, the fourth chapter and the 35th verse. In the days following this, this statement, many of the Samaritans became believers in Christ. Jesus saw the spiritual harvest of souls awaiting in the village. So who are you winning souls? We are all to win souls for Christ, but are you winning souls for the kingdom? We all have a major responsibility for winning souls for the kingdom. It says the spiritual harvest is the result of God's work in, our, in the heart of man. It is clear from the parable of the sower the seed and the sower, many people's hearts are good soil. When the word of God is sown, then the people accept it and continue to mature. So it says there is nothing we can do to change the soil. That is God's job. So that's found in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 26th verse. We can be faithful to sow seeds, help to plant the seed, or reap the harvest. The process of spiritual growth and maturity from the heart's regeneration to the recognition of faith is often a long journey. The Bible indicates the sower, the tender, and the reaper are likely to be different people at different times. And we know that because in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the sixth and the seventh verse, Paul wrote that when I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So even though you may not see the increase, there may be someone else after you that may come behind you to water the seed that you have sown, but it's going to be God that is going to give the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gave it the increase. It says just like the physical growth of the field, the spiritual growth of people is natural. And this is overseen by God himself. If we don't see anyone getting saved, it can be discouraging. But we need to remember that sowing is just as important 
as reaping. We have to tell someone about the word of God. So while we focus, our focus should be pleasing the one who sent us into the field rather than on controlling the rate of growth or the amount that we reap. We are not to glory in men or to think men above that which is written, but we are to glorify God alone for the good accomplished in the salvation of the souls through the gospel of Christ. We can be thankful for men who faithfully plant and faithfully water, and we can consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work, which is found in Hebrews, the 10th chapter and the 24th verse. So when you hear Minister Edwards, he'll get up and tell about the ones that he have been witnessing to while he's on his job. And you just see the excitement and the joy about when a soul has been won to Christ or a life has been changed. And just hearing Bishop and Lady Newsom over, over the pulpit and they're talking about the souls that have been won to Christ through their ministry. It is just something that will provoke you. What is stopping you from winning souls to the kingdom? God's laborers in the spiritual harvest are promised great rewards for their faith and their perseverance. So it says, don't give up. Don't become weary. People may shut their doors and close their doors on you, may tell you they don't want to hear anything from you about God. But it says, don't get weary. It says, believers are exhorted with words in Galatians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth verse. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So don't give up. You may not see that soul getting saved, but you planted the seed. And then someone else will come and water it. So don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't get weary. So it says, well, how do we harvest, Sister Stacey? So a good way to go out and harvest is tent revivals in the local church, going out evangelizing, going out witnessing. Another place you can go to is the nursing homes. Some people even evangelize, witness to others in the grocery store, witness to your next door neighbor, even witnessing to the very ones in your home. So we have a job to do, and it's all about harvesting souls. We can witness to our unsaved loved ones. I know I have brothers and sisters, some may not be saved, but I can tell them what thus says the Lord. So it says, blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So I would say don't give up and don't throw in the towel. Persevere. Keep on holding on to faith that the words that you are speaking, they will be light until someone else. So as you're praying for your children, that God will save them. Trust God that he's going to do the very thing. You never know who is watching your life. I, I watched you for so long and you say you remain faithful even in the midst of your circumstances and your situations. You didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. I want to know about this God that you serve. It says that sometimes we don't see it. We may not see it right off. We may not see it even a year down the road, but don't give up. Keep on talking. Keep on preaching. Keep on reaching. A harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. So don't go out, even though you may be crying now because you may not see the, your labor. You may feel that your labor is in vain, but just remain faithful to God. Continue to do the work of the Lord. Continue to sow your seeds. Jesus told us to pray to the Lord of the harvest for more laborers. 
Don't get don't give up. Don't give up. He told us to pray to the Lord of the harvest for more laborers. We should say we should pray about all aspects of the spiritual harvest process, including the preparation of the soil. So we know that the soil has to be right. Amen. So we sh we can ask God to change people's hearts. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, because while you're out there witnessing, evangelizing, while you are out there, you may be cursed out. You may be spit on, but it says patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Don't try to go toe for toe with someone that is not saved, but be kind to everyone. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of truth, which is 2 Timothy 2 and 24. God will use us in his field according to our gifts and the need of the moment as we trust him. God provides the opportunity for everyone to work. Well, Sister Stacy, how does this look for the church body, for the local body? It is about going out, witnessing, evangelizing, telling others about the love of God. So in John 3 and 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is just one thing that you can tell them, that God gave his only begotten son. And in Romans 10, 8, Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We want to win souls for the kingdom. Well, how do some churches do harvesting? Like I already told you, they have tent revivals. They go to the nursing home. Some churches even have food pantries. So, so when you even have a food pantry at your local church, then there are those that come in with a natural need. So before that spiritual need can be met, they want to know that, hey, my natural man is being fed. Because sometimes it's hard to receive when you have an empty stomach. Amen? So when someone goes out and plant a seed, and then they come back to check up on that seed, it's called a follow-up ministry. So where should I go to harvest then, Sister Stacy? Well, in Luke 14 and 23, it says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. And in conclusion, it says, Let us all labor in the harvest, and pray earnestly for the Lord to send more workers for this important task. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the hands of our leader, Bishop Joe L. Newsom. I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. A praise. Amen. God is worthy. How many of y'all God is worthy to be praised? God is worthy to be praised. How many of y'all enjoyed, amen, Evangelist Irvin on this evening, amen, praise the Lord as a timely teaching, amen, praise the Lord as we are in the kingdom, I mean, as we are, as we are in the season of kingdom sowing, kingdom harvesting, and kingdom growing, amen, and when we look at this season we're in now with this pandemic and this coronavirus going on around us, we need to go out and harvest. You got to look at one of the scriptures she, she mentioned was out of Matthew's Amen. Praise the Lord. 936. And we do thank God for being here. We got the road today. Amen. But Matthew's 936 is, but when he saw the multitude, it said he was moved with compassion on them. In order to, amen, to harvest, you got to have compassion. 
as she mentioned, you got to have compassion. He said he's moved with compassion on them because they fainted. Amen. Praise the Lord. They, they, they lost heart. And a lot of people have lost faith in the church. Amen. Because we have made, amen, church service more about the filthy lucre than about the soul. And so, amen, because they fainted. And we have a lot of people that's fainting in our neighborhood and around us. And they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I want to encourage you on this evening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get off your seat or do nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord and go out in your vineyard and work. And what's over right, the Bible declares that God will pay you. Amen. Praise the Lord because the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we thank God for the teaching. Amen. Praise the Lord. Was there any questions from them that are here? Amen. From, or even from the viewers. Were there any questions before we close out on this evening? Amen. Praise the Lord. I left my cell phone back there so I don't have mine to find out if any viewers asking any questions. Amen. Praise the Lord. But are there any questions? Amen. From the floor, anyone that's viewing, if you could bring mine to me, I appreciate it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we don't want to close out without entertaining, amen, questions that we may have from the audience. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any questions? Amen. All right. Amen. If no questions, amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Amen. We thank you for how you have blessed us. Amen. Praise the Lord to be kingdom-minded people. And God, we ask it in the name of Jesus, you bless us on this evening, O God, as we continue to do thy will and seek thy face in this season of gathering. God, we know that there are some that are scattered from the east to the west, the north, and the south. Amen. Looking for shepherds, O God. And God, we ask him right now in the name of Jesus that you help us and inspire us and encourage us to go out into the highways, into the hedges, and compel them that are lost to come home in the name of Jesus. And Lord, be so ever careful to give thy name the praise. The glory and honor shall be thine. In Jesus' name we pray, Minister Edwards. Can we say amen and amen. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again and may God bless you.